I cannot tell you how excited I am about opening this box. Welcome back to ZDNet's DIY IT. My name is David Gewertz, and before we get into today's project, I'd like to spend 60 seconds talking to you about COVID-19, the novel coronavirus. It feels very odd to be talking about regular day-to-day -day projects in light of the pandemic, but we need to hang on to what normalcy we can find in order to stay sane. In my case, many of my projects revolve around working at home tech, which is now more relevant than ever. So rather than holding back out of some feeling of impropriety, I'm sharing what I'm working on in the hopes it will inspire or help you solve work at home problems. That said, my thoughts are with all of you, our entire planet, as we face this invisible enemy. I'm heartened to see how many folks are respecting quarantines and social distancing, how many people are lending others a helping hand, and how much our collaboration technology is actually helping to save the day. Be well, my friends, be strong, be safe. And with that, let's get back to our regularly scheduled programming. This box has been sitting here for about two and a half weeks. I've had other projects I had to finish, but I am so excited about what's inside this box. So without further ado, let's, let's cut it open. This is probably the single most exciting box opening I have had in quite a while. And that's not just because the foam is very cool. All right, here is what we're looking at. The ATEM Mini, I'll show you these both in a minute. And the, oh my God, the Pocket Cinema 6K. Oh, okay, be still my beating heart. This is just, Way cool. So this is just too cool. What we're looking at is the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K and the Blackmagic ATEM Mini. Now, these are two separate components of what's basically going to be quite an improvement to the video system that we're working on here. And I have to thank Blackmagic for providing these. Um, I'm just so excited. All right. So... Let's open the ATEM Mini first. We'll come to the Blackmagic camera in a minute. I'll tell you about this first. This is a box opening. I'm not gonna be able to set it up and run everything right now because integrating a amazing switcher like this into my environment is gonna take more than the 10 minutes or so I have to talk to you in this box opening, but it's still exceedingly cool. All right, so let's just talk about what we're, we're looking at. It's basically four HDMI cameras and computers. It can also output um, USB-C, but here's, and here's all the little plugs. Here's the device, okay, this baby. This is a full switcher. Now, Blackmagic, for those of you not familiar with it, Blackmagic makes uh, these ATEM devices all the way up to, to major studio level things. And basically what they've done is they've bottled some of that studio technology into this device. What this thing allows us to do is switch between four HDMI inputs, one HDMI output. but this thing behaves like a webcam. So you can take the inputs and outputs of this and pipe it into Skype or pipe it into Zoom or some other conferencing software. You can also control it through the ethernet port here. And you can use the variety of buttons to switch from each of these things. Now, what I wanna use this for is this box contains 
the black magic green screen technology, the, the chroma key technology. And we're talking yeah. about broadcast studio level chroma key technology in a box like this. Now, this is basically a capture card. You could use this to capture things off your PS4 or your, your Xbox or whatever. It's 300 bucks. A typical capture card that does nothing but just brings in HDMI is pretty close to the same price, but this thing has all sorts of transitions, picture in picture. Um, it, when you connect it through ethernet, you gain access to the complete ATEM interface, the software interface that you can control from your computer. And essentially you have an entire switching system um, that's basically a broadcast level system that you can control off this under $300 box. It's, it's just so exciting. Um, so anyway, my purpose, my, my primary idea with this thing was to use this to create a green screen webcam so that when I do Skype interviews or I do Zoom interviews or whatever, I can pump straight out from here with a green screen background to that interview. So that's where I'm gonna take this. It's, it's really exciting. It's probably gonna be a little ways away because it's gonna require a lot of things to be hooked up to make work, but it's exceedingly cool. Now, in concert with that idea, was originally going to be the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, which is this thing that I'm about to open next. It gets more exciting. As I've started to think about how this thing works, it's just really exciting. First off, we're talking about, well, let me get the plastic off of here so that you can see it in the top-down view. And we don't have all this sort of glare and stuff like that. All right. So, this is, let me take it out of the box before I talk about it. This is something I've wanted to open for such a long time. Okay. Okay. Calm down, dude. All right. I'm going to look at the accessories in a minute, but I just, I, I have to see the camera. I have to. Oh. Okay. All right. Okay. Check this baby out. Look at this. Just, just look at this thing. This is, this is too cool for words. All right. So first off, let's 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 acknowledge something. This is called this is called the Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. Pocket, Pocket. I don't have any pockets that'll hold this. This is not Pocket, but it is a cinema camera. So let's put this into context. The Blackmagic cameras are cinema cameras, and what what that means is that they're they're, made, they're, they're, they're not movie cameras in that they make mo motion pictures. They're movie cameras in that they make motion pictures. They're designed to make Netflix documentaries, the kind of things that you would see on Hulu or produce real film. This is not just something that you point and shoot, although that's what I'm going to use it for. But it's a real full tilt cinema camera, which means that it is, you know, this is $2,500. Um... It competes really well against $25,000 cinema cameras. That's what makes this amazing. 
The part that I'm going to start looking at, I mean, there's, there's a couple of things about this that excite me. Um, let me show you the first one because this is what makes this enormously practical. This is my uh, Canon um, T6S. I keep confusing which one this one is, but this is my T6S. And it's got a random EF lens on it. So let's take this. I'll put this gently down here. And figure out how to pop the lens cover off. It's just spin. No, it pushes. It pushes. It pushes. Okay. I'll take this camera and I'm going to pop the lens off. And I'm going to take this little white dot and I'll line it up with the little red dot here. Oh! Oh, baby! Okay. So, and in fact, I can even take the black magic cover and put it back on here. Okay. This is plug compatible with lenses with all the Canon EF lenses. Okay. So this is an EFS 18 to 135. It's basically a kit lens, but we can interchange lenses between the T6 series, T7 series, the, the Canon Rebel series, and all of the other Canon lenses and the black magic. So that means that rather than having to build up two lens libraries but without having to build up two big piles of glass and glass is expensive, we can share them among the cameras. That's incredibly important. Now the, the black magic used to have, actually they still do their cinema 4k and the 4k did not use the EF lenses. The EF lens compatibility is huge in terms of just practical usage. So the other thing that's interesting about this is that it's 6K. Now, for me, I'm probably not going to take it out and do a whole lot of gorgeous cinema, cinema excuse me, take it out and do all sorts of gorgeous scenery photography or scenery videos, because that's not what I do for a living. So I live in Oregon and Oregon in the spring is really pretty. Oregon right now is cold and gray and wet. Wet, cold, gray. It does not lend itself towards gorgeous videography. So I've asked the folks at Blackmagic to send me some pretty B-roll to show you so that you can see what it'll do in that context. <laughs> What I'm going to be using it for is here, because what I can do is I can take, instead of a 4K frame that I can grab and, and crop into, this is a 6K frame. So it's a much larger amount of video that this captures frame by frame. It's capturing in 6K roughly 20 megabytes 30 times a second. That's a tremendous amount of data, but it's a big frame. And that will allow me to set the camera and work on something and zoom really close in to show you what I'm working on without having to move the camera. And when I'm working alone with, you know, saws and 3D printers and projects and DIY, having the ability to zoom really tightly into something without having to touch the camera and without losing resolution is going to be a huge win. All right, so this is how this is going together. And this is going to be a very typical example of where I expect to use the 6K camera as essentially a dynamic zoom when I don't have an operator. Here's the camera over here, and it's got an 18 to 135 lens on it, but it's pulled back because what we want to do is we want to be able to get me in the shot here, but we also want to get a really tight zoom in here to the, uh, to the drill press as it's being operated. So what we want to do is be able to have a full size image and a really tight, close macro zoom on the project at the same time. And the way I'm accomplishing that is by using the 6K resolution of the camera rather than coming back over here and adjusting my zoom each time or, or having an operator, which I can't have at this point. It's just going to be me and the camera. So instead, I'm using the extra resolution to give me that tight focus on what I want to show. Now, the downside of this is that a four minute clip is 56 gigabytes, 
but you know, storage is theoretically cheap and therefore I'm able to get that kind of effect. And there'll be other effects where I'm able to take advantage of the huge amount of data that the camera is recording and that allows me more flexibility to do what I need to do. Now that's a different kind of activity from what a filmmaker might do, but it's really good for these how-to videos and for the kinds of things that I'm working on. Now the downside of the 6K uh, video that this captures is it only captures in Blackmagic RAW. And what that means is that I have to take it into Blackmagic Resolve, or into, into DaVinci Resolve, which is a Blackmagic uh, video editing system with a very nice video editing system, but I tend to use, um, I use Final Cut. So I have to take this into DaVinci Resolve, grab and edit the video I need, probably color, uh, color correct it because DaVinci Resolve has great color correction, export that into Final Cut, and then do my videos in Final Cut. It's probably worth it for the flexibility and image quality I'm gonna be able to get from this. So there you go, stay tuned. Um, I'm gonna be hooking this up and making some videos with it. I'm gonna be hooking up the ATEM and doing live Skype with green screen and I'll show you how old that is being done. This is some really cool gear. And, and the thing is, is, is at $2,500 and for the ATEM Mini $300, on the surface that's you know, that's money, right? But when you realize the technology that's in this, you're looking at, you know, fifty dollars to $100,000 of broadcast studio for less than $3,000. We've come a long way in our technology, and this is a very exciting point. This makes it feasible for departments, individuals like me, um, small companies, startups, Kickstarters. It makes it possible for all of those folks to do broadcast level product at an affordable rate with you know with amazing technology so for ZDNet's diy it and with thank you to owc and black magic my name is david gewertz go out there and film something cool i sure will and i'll show you when i'm done Thank mm -hmm. you.